Okay, our patient is back after three weeks of um, uh, post-treatment. Uh, three weeks ago we did some scaling and root planing in conjunction with uh, PerioWave. After three weeks, improvements to the gum area are noticeable. These improvements include improved tone and texture, shallower pockets, and reduced bleeding. We want to be extra careful uh, with our, our, our probing because we don't want to disrupt any healing that is still occurring. So we're going to be uh, extra delicate with our, with our periodontal probe and go back in and check some of these areas. And you're going to see the results after three weeks. Three. Two. 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 Any pockets greater than four millimeters that bleed when probed should be retreated at three to six weeks. Four, two, two, three, and again, if you take a look, the stippling of the tissue, uh, lack of bleeding compared to three weeks ago. So again, the goal um, after three weeks of initial therapy is to lightly debride the areas that you want to retreat and follow up with the periwave treatment in those localized areas. So again, specifically, we're going to treat 2-2 um, distal, which was our largest defect. It's nice to note that the cannula doesn't go nearly as far as it did. And again, I, I stress the lack of bleeding. And again, um, we want to gently and small increments, keeping in mind that the radius of kill is approximately two to three millimeters. And again, we had scaled and root plane uh, T21, 22, and 23. Um, if we take a look over here, you can definitely uh, see the difference in the texture of the tissue. There is a growing awareness of serious health consequences associated with gum disease. Clear evidence has emerged implicating it as a major health risk, and as a result, patients and dentists alike are looking for solutions. Clinicians may opt with at-risk patients to pre-treat with periwave prior to scaling and root planing in order to destroy the harmful bacteria associated with gum disease and minimize the bleeding that will occur during instrumentation. Dr. Joseph Andery describes the process. Uh, we're very concerned about the periopathogens entering into the bloodstream. So we're going to do a pretreatment with periwave to not only control the bleeding, but to kill the bacteria before they get a chance to enter into the bloodstream. So but what I'd like to demonstrate now is some initial scaling um, so that you can see the difference between the before and after treatment. Uh, again, a very important step in controlling uh, the bacteria before they get into the bloodstream. So, again, as you can see, there's continuous bleeding there. And that was with a light scaling and root planing. Knowing the amount of bacteria that resides down in those periodontal pockets, we know that the deeper the pocket, the more the bacteria, and we want to try and control all that before it enters into the bloodstream. So, we're going to go ahead and start to pre treat, then we're going to return to scaling and root planing, and you'll see the difference uh, uh, with. Um, with not only the tissue, but the amount of bleeding when we continue with that. Again, the purpose of this is to eradicate and destroy a lot of the bacteria before they enter the bloodstream. And again, we wanna make sure that you instill enough of the photosensitizer down into those deep pockets. And again, we concentrate on one site at a time. Once enough photosensitizer has been placed, we go ahead and we place the uh, diffusing tip 
down at the base of the pocket and we gently and ever so carefully move that wand. A very quick kill, uh, timed at 60 seconds. If you can recall the amount of bleeding we had prior to, and if we take a look now, after a pretreatment, we can see that that bleeding is greatly reduced. And that is how fast PeriWave works. The use of the PeriWave system as a pretreatment is an additional benefit that will allow you to improve the overall level of periodontal care. In order for the periwave treatment system to operate properly, the light diffusing tip must deliver the correct level of illumination. Therefore, it is recommended that the system be cleaned and tested after each treatment. Uh, it's important to, to test the machine on a regular basis and the way that is done is without the diffuser tip in place, the wand is placed in the side port of the machine, of the base station, and the foot pedal is depressed and what we are waiting for is the upper green light to stop flashing. And that concludes the test to ensure that the power coming out of the tip to the diffuser, ultimately to the patient, is, is adequate to um, activate the photosensitizer that is placed below the gum line. Clean the handpiece after each treatment, wiping the fiber optic joint prior to autoclaving. The wand can then be dismantled into three pieces where it can be thoroughly cleaned and placed in the sterilizer. When it does come back, what you want to ensure is that the tip of the wand that goes into the diffuser tip is cleaned by gently placing it on the white tape that is provided. Proper maintenance and testing will ensure that your periwave treatment system performs properly and delivers the correct level of illumination. Clinical outcomes should include a reduction in pocket depth, an increase in clinical attachment level, a decrease in bleeding on probing, and an improvement in gingival tissue tone and texture. For more information about the PerioWave treatment system, please visit www.periowave.com.